everyone, I'm Jody here from Club Calisthenics and we are going to work on some press handstands today. Straddle presses to be exact. So um, we have, we're going to do regressions and progressions for any skill level, so stick with us. Um, for today, you will need some sliders and or paper plates. Um, they should be great on the carpet if you are doing your practice on the carpet. Additionally, a yoga block will be great for those who are still working on their mobility because we're going to do a little bit of compression work, a little bit of um, straddle, good mornings. And so these are great for anyone who is still kind of, you know, working on loosening up their hamstrings. Um, so this is, these are the items that you need for today. And we're just going to get, I'm going to put these aside and we're going to get started on our workout. All right. Oh, sorry, you guys. Today, I also have Nicholas here with me. I apologize. He's going to be our demo, and he's going to work out with me and us. So we're going to start with um, just some neck circles. So we're going to go from the top to the bottom. We're going to do six or eight neck circles to the left, nice and slowly. Now we're going to switch and go to the right or the other direction, whichever way you went the first time. All righty, you're going to look down. Bring your chin to your chest as best as you can. Feel a stretch in the back of your neck. We're going to look up. Try and bring your chin to the ceiling. Look down again. Bring your chin to your chest. And then up again. Chin to the ceiling. All right, let's start loosening up our shoulders. We're gonna start with our right arm. We're gonna just do some arm circles to the back for one. And you're pushing your, you're protracting your shoulder on the way forward. You're reaching super high when you get to the top and you're reaching really far back um, when it's behind you. And then you wanna try and keep your rib cage centered um, for every circle that you do. So we don't wanna do this because we're not really working our shoulders. Well, the range of motion anyway. I don't know how many that was. All right, let's switch. All right, let's go left arm back, same thing. Really high, retract your shoulders, protract, reach high, retract. All righty, left arm forward for one. Two, three, four, five, six. All right, we're going to do some swimmers claps. So arms front to back, alternating between which one is on top. You can think about um, hugging your shoulders. And then also, uh, whenever your arms are behind you, you can think about trying to touch the backs of your hands. We're gonna do some German arm swings. So right arm, we're concentrating on the arm that's above our head. So you wanna try and reach through your spine with that top arm. And then it can just be loose from side to side. Three, four, Five, 
five, six. All righty, working our way down. We're gonna loosen up our hips a little bit. So we're gonna go for some hip circles. You're gonna really push um, your hips forward and feel the stretch in your hip flexors. Push your hips back and kind of feel it in your hamstrings. Switch directions. Five, one more. Six. All right, we're gonna move into some trunk circles. So you're gonna go down the left side of your body. You're gonna kind of sweep between your legs, come back up the right side of your body. You're gonna do a little arch on the way back, whatever feels most comfortable, and then back down the left side. So we're gonna do six on one side and six on the other. Nice and slow. You should feel a side stretch, and then on your way back, you should stretch out your back. This should be a side bend, you feel it in your obliques. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Now we're going to switch sides. You're going to go down the right, up the left. One. Two, three, four, five, six. All right, so we're going to do a forward fold um, just stretch out our lower body. So with your feet um, a little wider than hip width apart or shoulder width apart, we're just gonna do a forward fold. So we're gonna do some bounces while we're down here. Really flex um, your hip flexors to try and bring your chest closer to your knees. You should feel a stretch behind your knees and your hamstrings. In addition to bounces, you can um, hold your elbows and you can sway side to side if that feels good to you. You can just let yourself hang down to the middle. Now we're going to do a little bit of uh, more of a static hold. So um, try and think about bringing your, the top of your head towards the floor. So you want to try and squeeze really hard. You're engaging your hip flexors to try and um, bring your head, bring your chest closer to your knees and your head closer to the ground. Hold for three, two, one. Slowly come up. Now we're going to bring our feet together and we're going to do a pike forward fold. So now um, you're going to start to bounce, bringing your chest to your knees. So we're not doing our head to our knees. We're concentrating on bringing our chest to our knees because that's where you get the best um, stretch in your hamstrings. And you can um, pedal your knees a little bit, straighten one while you bend the other. That feels good. And then we'll move into a static hold again where you're engaging your hip flexors to try and bring your chest closer to your knees and your head closer to the ground. Just hold it. Three, two, one. And we can go down to our knees from here. We're gonna go ahead and uh, stretch our wrists. So we'll start out with um, palms down, fingers forward, and you're 
just going to be in your tabletop position. And um, your, the eye of your elbow should be facing forward. Shoulders should be away from your ears. And whatever position you're in, you're just going to kind of do some bounces forward. We're going to do um, about 10 to 15 uh, bounces. If you need to go side to side, that's fine too. So now we will do palms down, fingers facing you. And so uh, you just can kind of sit back in your heels for a deeper stretch. If the tabletop, if that's good enough for you, then that's fine, stay there. If you need something a little bit deeper, you can, um, you can sit back on your heels. Alrighty. Now we will switch and we will do uh, palms up, fingers towards you. Again, the farther your hands are from your knees, the deeper the stretch it will be. And so you shouldn't force this. This should just be a very light stretch. Um, and, you know, everyone has different ranges of their own mobility. So what Nicholas and I can do doesn't necessarily um, reflect what your body should be able to do. So keep that in mind and listen to your body for any limitations. Um, you should not be feeling any pain, just some stretching. And then we will do um, palms up, fingers forward. And from here, you can actually, um, we'll make some, some fists with our, with our hands while we're doing the wrist stretch. So um, while our, our palms are up and fingers are forward, we'll just make some tight fists, hold for a couple seconds, and then we'll release. And we'll do this three to five times. Alrighty, shake it out a little bit. And then we have two more wrist stretches. Um, this next one is going to be, excuse me, pinkies in. And so this one can be very challenging, so just do the best you can. But this is a great drill for um, the more advanced handstanders. Um, whenever we bail out of our handstands, sometimes, you know, we turn our wrists. And so this is a great stretch to prevent injury before we go into our handstands. And then we're going to go the other way. So with your fingers facing forward, your thumbs are going to go away from each other and then around to this position. I know. Uh, thumbs facing you. We have pinkies in and then we have thumbs away. Alrighty. So since we are going to be doing some straddle press work today, um, we're going to finish our warm up with some straddle good mornings. So this is um, a great time uh, to use a yoga block or a pillow if you are still working on your mobility and your pancake flexibility. So we're going to give this to Nicholas so he can be our demo today um, for that. And so starting out, we're going to do the first set of good mornings. Um, it's not necessarily, it's, it's your widest straddle where you still have stability. So anyone who's super flexible, if you have a perfect middle split, good mornings are very difficult, if not impossible, to do correctly with a full split. So you do need to bring them in a little bit, um, but still the widest straddle that's most comfortable in your good morning. And so the, um, we're gonna have our arms up overhead and you're just going to lean forward as far as you can and then back up and we're keeping our back straight um, whenever i lean forward i'm reaching as far as i can and then i'm continuing to reach as i bring my body back up maintaining we're going to keep our core nice and tight and we're also going to keep our back flat so we're going to do six good mornings in our open straddle ready 
One, two, three, four, five, six. Good. Now, shake it out a little bit, move your feet a little closer together. This is gonna be our narrow straddle for good mornings. Same concept. When you get to the lowest part of your pancake, you're just gonna reach forward and then reach forward, um, keeping your back straight all the way up. Ready. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Good. All right, shimmy your feet a little closer into your pike. We're gonna stretch out our pike as well. And so in this case, um, if you have a yoga block and you're using it, um, if you want to try and really extend your reach, you can use the yoga block in your hands, try and surpass your feet and then back up. Are you gonna give that a try? Yeah, perfect. So. If you're not there yet, that's fine too. Again, we're just reaching as far as we can up and as far as we can forward. For six, ready? And one, two, three, four, five, six. Alrighty. Whew. Shoulders are burning. So, Let's take a deep breath. Um, Nicholas, if you want to grab some water, you can. And then we will move into um, our first skill. So we're going to immediately start with our skill work um, for a press handstand. And so the, we're going to, I'm going to walk you through a bunch of different progressions. And then depending on where you are in your own personal practice, Choose that progression that fits you and challenges you without fear of getting hurt. And then that's where you will continue practicing for um, the remainder of the practice, if that makes sense. Um, before we just jump right into skill work, we're gonna do just a quick 30 second handstand hold. So um, if you have a freestanding handstand and you wanna kick in, by all means, and we're just gonna do 30 seconds. If you don't make it to 30 seconds, come down, shake it out, kick back in. Um, if you're not doing it freestanding, then find a wall and just place your hands on the ground, kick into whatever um, handstand you're most comfortable with in terms of um, if you are away from the wall a little bit and you're trying to kind of find your balance or if you're just flat up against the wall, that's fine as well. You can do belly in, you can do um, your back to the wall, whatever suits you best. We just want to get our wrists ready and our shoulders loaded for our press work. So um, Nicholas, I guess um, I'll just very quickly show the different kick in options for just the freestanding handstand. So if we're doing, if we're kicking into the wall, um, we're just going to get in however is most comfortable and then this will be our hold. If you want to do belly to wall, if that's where you are, then you're just going to walk your feet up the wall until you get to the position that you're most comfortable in and then we'll hold this for 30 seconds and then you'll come down. And then Nicholas is going to go ahead and do the 30 second freestanding and I'm just, hold on for a second, I'm just going to be here um, to just help him hot potato spot. Um, if you're doing this at home again, just kick in for the 30 seconds if you don't make it the full time. So we're going to start in three, two, one, good. Very nice. So you're concentrating on um, pushing your shoulders or yeah, pushing your shoulders away from the floor. Five, four, three, two, one, come down. Good job. 
And when I say pushing your shoulders away from the floor, I actually just mean you just want to push as tall through your shoulders as possible in your handstand. So we're going to go directly into some skill work. Um, we're going to start with the most basic um, drill, and then we will go through the different progressions in order to challenge the more advanced students who are tuning in today. So for a straddle press, um, apologize, I got kind of away from my mat. Um, we're going to, the first drill, if you've never done a straddle press, if you know we're close to getting it, we just want to um, work on loading our shoulders and um, identifying sort of that hip compression. And so um, with your feet uh, wider than shoulder width apart and your hands down, what you'll do is you'll just lean on your toes, um, put all the weight in your hands, and then back. So we're loading our shoulders, we're pushing tall, and then we're back, coming back down. If that feels good, then we're going to try and push, um, we're going to rock forward on our hands, and then we're going to do a toe tap with one of our feet to our hands, just one at a time. So we'll push forward, do a little toe tap, come back down. We'll push forward, do a little toe tap, come back down. So if that's where you are, we're going to do, um, you're going to either do 10 rocks forward, or you're going to do five rocks with your right toe tap, five rocks with your left toe tap. From there, if you are a bit more advanced, we're going to um, try and do a little bit of a hover, so, or a little bit of a float. So you're going to put all the weight in your hands, you're going to try and find a little bit of a float, and then you're going to come back down. All the weight in your hands, a little float, come back down. Again, moving on from there, is the puppy press. So it's kind of a big jump from hover to puppy press. So again, it's much better to feel very confident before you move forward with um, a puppy press attempt. But so the way that a puppy press works is um, rather than doing a straddle press with both legs, you do a straddle press with one leg bent and already raised, and so it counterbalances in order to get you into that straddle press. So, um, okay, so I'm going to, I'll demo a puppy press for you guys. So with your hands on the floor and setting um, your feet a little bit wider than hip width, uh, you're gonna prep yourself for your straddle press, but you're gonna lift one leg so that it's already as high as you can get. You push on your toes, and that's the beginning of your puppy press. Let's see if we can do it again. Woo. <laughs> Normally we can stick it. So that's with um, your right leg bent. Um, going into it with your left leg bent is the exact same concept. So if that's the skill level that you're at, we're gonna do five with the right leg bent and five with the left leg bent. So. I'll try and do a better demo with my left leg bent. That's your puppy press. Um, alrighty, moving into the more advanced straddle press, we're going to do five straddle press positives and five straddle press negatives. So for the positive, Nicholas is gonna demo. Um, set yourself up, um, again, feet width apart, whatever you're most comfortable with, and you're gonna put the weight into your hands, um, slide your feet if you can. Otherwise, if you have a slight jump at the bottom, that's okay as well. Stick it at the top, give yourself a little hold, and then that is the straddle negative. So Nicholas can do the positive and the negative back to back pretty consistently. Um, for those of us who are still working on control of both, um, for the straddle negative, or yes, for the straddle negative, Nicholas is just gonna kick into his handstand, find his balance, and then do a very slow descent of the negative as, as slow as he can. 
Pressure's on. Great job. So that's the straddle negative. If we have any viewers out there who are working their pike press or already have it, you can absolutely do that at this time. Um, you can even do a puppy pike press where you would start um, with one leg. Let's see. Um, so you'd start with your feet together, one leg bent, and you would go up on your toes. That was not it. <laughs> However, that's it, and then back down. So you can do, um, you can alternate which leg, and then again, if you have your pike press, then by all means, let's do five pike positives, and then we'll do five pike negatives. So we're gonna break, well, those of you who are at the beginner level, you've probably already gotten your um, sets in, so take a deep breath, grab some water. Um, we're gonna let the more advanced students get there five reps of each in. Um, so Nicholas is going to work his positive and his negative in the same um, set. So he's just gonna do five good positive straddle presses followed by the negative once he finds his balance in that handstand. So no <laughs> good. Yeah, so this is going to take a little bit of time. So he and I can actually trade off. Um, let's see. So I've been working my pike presses, so I can show you guys a demonstration of that with the positive and the negative for anybody who's working towards it. Um, one of the most difficult parts of the pike press is just the mobility side of getting your hips as high as you can from the get-go. So. Um, I like to get my hands and feet as close as I can, go up on my tiptoes. And then work the negative as well. Nicholas's turn. Very good. Very good. And again, you have to kind of take some breaths. So hopefully this time frame, everybody's been able to kind of work on their own, um, progress to where they are in their own practice. Um, and then once you get to a stopping point, you know, again, grab some water um, and then we will move on from there. Well, so between the two of us, we can do five. How many more do you have? Well, if we don't count the one I did, I have two. Okay, so he'll do one more, and then I can finish it up for you guys. Also, this is a very real scenario at home. Beware of fans and ceiling lights. For sure. <laughs> Alrighty, so I'll do pike positive and negative. Give it a try. Oh, I guess um, lastly, even though this is in hindsight, for anyone who has a very good positive and negative, it's always a great practice also if you wanna keep on going down into a stalder. Um, we'll see where my practice is today, uh, so no guarantees, but um, it would just be a normal straddle press, and then when you come down, you would skip your feet and go into an L-sit. We are going to now move into some compression work. So we got our skills training out of the way. 
So now we're going to work on our hip flexors um, because the more flexion we get, the better all of our press work will be. So in a comfortable straddle, um, not quite as wide as you can go, but a little bit more narrow, we're going to um, face our right knee and you want to turn your shoulders and then we're just going to lift this leg as high as we can for 10 reps. And again, these are very difficult to do. If you're only getting a little bit of clearance off the ground, that's okay. What we don't want is like a bend flick. We're not looking for that. So keep your leg as tight as you can. And if you're only lifting it a little bit, that's okay. But make sure the knee is tight and the leg is tight. So we're going to do 10 on our right leg, 10 on our left leg, 10 on both legs, and then a 10 second hold. So starting with the right for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Whew. So again with these, you want to try and keep your back up and straight as possible. Um, and then if you need it to be more difficult, you can lean farther down, um, farther down your leg. If um, it's too hard, you can kind of sit up a little bit more, but we do not want this because we want to really concentrate on the hip flexors or isolate the hip flexors. So left, ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All righty, both legs. Four, one, two, three, four, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Shake it out for a second. Ten second hold, both legs. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good job. All right, you can shake your hips out. Um, you can do kind of like a little side back and forth. Loosen it all up. So we're gonna do that same sequence, but we're gonna do it in a pike position. How are you feeling, good? Mm -hmm. All right, so you can see the side with Nicholas. So in the pike, same concept. Keep your back, back nice and flat, shoulders up straight. Um, the closer you lean to your feet, the harder it's going to be. If you have amazing compression, you're lifting your leg up to your face every time, you need to be bending farther over. Um, so two to three inches off the ground is probably a good indicator of when you need to move your hands farther down. So we'll start with our right leg. Ready for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, shake it out. Both legs. Four, one, two, three, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, ten second hold. Ready? Four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good job. All righty. So, if you um, if that's feeling great and you want to do another round. By all means, for the sake of time, we're going to go ahead and start to cool down. So we're going to stretch out. Um, we're going to stretch out our wrists, and then we're going to stretch out our hips. So on your hands and knees, we're going to do palms down, fingers forward. We're going to lean forward a little bit, and this can be more of a static hold. Kind of telling your body that you're done with the workout. Bring your heart rate down. We're gonna do palms up, fingers back. 
And again, elbows, the eye of the elbow should be facing forward. Shoulders should be away from your ears. Alrighty. Then we will do fingers back, palms down. Sit back to whatever feels most comfortable for you. And then last, we're going to do palms up, fingers forward. Alrighty, stretch out those hip flexors a little bit. Let's do some lunges. So we'll do um, right leg up. You're going to just push as far forward as is comfortable. You wanna make sure that um, your knee is not going over your foot. So we don't wanna be in this position. We wanna make sure that our ankle and knee are aligned as best we can. If you need a deeper stretch in the hip flexor, you can take the opposite arm up. So if your right leg's forward, take your left arm up and you can actually reach over your body and it really gets that hip flexor good. But you wanna make sure that your hips are facing forward because if you're opening up to do this, it's not really getting it. Alrighty, and then let's switch legs. So left leg forward, sit, and then just kind of ease into it. So in terms of, again, feeling the hip flexor, depending on your mobility, if you push forward, you might feel it here. If you push forward and pull your chest back, you might feel it there. If you need a little bit more, again, you can put that opposite arm or the same hip flexor arm up and then lean in the opposite direction. All right, and then last but not least, we're gonna do a seal stretch. So place your hands um, on the ground, whatever's comfortable, and you're just going to um, sit yourself up. Um, you wanna bring your shoulders away from your ears, and you just wanna try and let your body kinda of sink in. Um, you definitely don't want all of the load to be in your lower back, cause it will hurt. Um, so you can spread your legs a little bit, you want to keep your core engaged to an extent while also being able to feel that stretch. You can look over your right shoulder and it'll kind of get that left hip flexor. Look over your left shoulder, get the other one really good. And then come out of it. So that's all that we have for you today. Thank you for joining us um, and we will see you next time.